Hi and congratulations on your 2021 Versa. This is our S model. This is a great little car. It's amazing on gas. They did a really nice job on the redesign. It almost looks like a Sentra. It's built on the same uh, platform as your Kicks. So it's gonna get great gas mileage and drive really nice as well. Let's have a look at the features that you've got with this. On our infotainment system, we've got a seven inch touchscreen display, which is really nice. You've got AM, FM, USB, Bluetooth, and auxiliary for your inputs. And right now USB is not lit up because there's nothing down there. You can plug a thumb drive full of music or your phone or another device into there and it will stream. Very easy to operate. If I go into my settings and then connections, I can add a device from right here. All I gotta do is hit add new. And then on your phone, you're gonna go into the settings and then Bluetooth and you're gonna add in my Versa. If you're on an Android phone, once you've done that, then you're gonna back out. You're gonna go down to your uh, security settings. You're looking for smart lock or something that re resembles that. From there, you're gonna add a trusted device and then you're gonna add my Versa. If you don't do this and you have a lock screen on your phone, it is going to be a problem. From there, all you gotta do is press the audio button. It takes you right back out. Now, if, when it comes time to change your clocks because of daylight savings time, we're gonna go into settings. We're gonna go into clock and set clock manually. So at the moment, I wanna increase this by one minute and then I'm gonna press okay, that's done. In the spring, when it's time to set my clock ahead, all I gotta do is come over here press on and I can see my hour just jumped ahead and back in the fall we're going to come back in and just turn it right back off and then again we're just going to press the audio to get back when you turn it off and then turn it back on you're going to end up at the menu which is just right here and you can pick and choose where you want to be down below we have our climate control so you can pick where you want your airflow to be so I'm going to set it to the windshield and floor at the moment because we are heading into the winter my fan speed is set right here Rear defrost is down below here. AC, now when you're on AC, you do want it and you see it didn't come on because the fan needs to be on. You do want it on recycled air when you're on AC, but it's gotta be set on the floor or the floor and vents, and then it will let you set it. I'm gonna put it back to recycled air and put us back where we were, and I'm gonna turn off the AC. My temperature control is over here and you can see right now it's all the way over in the heat. Down below is my auxiliary port, USB, and my 12 volt power port, where you can plug any type of adapter into there. We do have the ignition button down here beside our gear shift now. Makes it very easy, foot on the brake, press and release that, and your vehicle will start. Make sure your foot stays on the brake the whole time. And then we've got a couple of additional USB ports down here. These are strictly for charging whereas this one up here will interact with the vehicle. On my steering wheel here, I've got a D-shaped sport wheel, so it is flat on the bottom. My cruise control button is here, and then my settings are all right here, very easy to operate. On the left side of my wheel, I can control the volume for my radio here, and then I can go through the presets here, as well as change the source of my audio from here. So I have total control of everything I want to do with the radio, all with the push of a thumb. My phone is Bluetooth hands-free. Now this button is going to answer or hang up a call while this button here is going to allow me to make an outbound call. All you gotta do is press that button, wait for the tone, and then however the person is labeled in the contacts of your phone, just say call whoever. If they're not in the contacts on your phone, press that and then say call and then rhyme off the phone number. For example, 902-469-8484. If you press and hold this button, it will get you the voice recognition system for your phone, depending on the type of phone that you have. Down on the side here, we've got a few different buttons here. My bottom button here will turn off the traction control. Now I recommend just leaving this alone because if I push this, I see a few button, a few lights just came on. So my traction control is off, but now I've just disabled my safety features. So we're gonna leave that alone. This button will turn off the automatic emergency braking and forward collision warning in the front of the vehicle. I have my parking sensor because we have rear emergency braking and rear sonar. And then we've got lane departure warning, which I can turn on or off with this button here. Now this button is going to allow me to change my screen up here. Right now I'm on the main screen, which shows me my fuel economy up top, my average fuel economy, where my gas is at. Now you can see here, 
these burrs start moving down as your gas goes down. When it's full, it's all the way across. As it reduces, it goes down, and you can see my distance to empty right there. As indicated here, your gas tank is on the driver's side of the vehicle, and the release for that is right down here next to your hood release. I'm gonna press this shadow box here. My next screen over gives me just my average fuel economy if you don't want the screen as busy. The next one is my average speed. It's not a digital speedometer. There is no digital speedometer on the car. Next screen over is the total time it's been running since it was reset last. And to reset any of these screens, I simply press and hold that shadow box and it resets it back to the beginning. Next screen over is a trip odometer, which again, I can reset the same way, except I don't need to at the moment. And then once more, it takes me back where we started. If I wanna change my dash brightness, all I gotta do is turn, push the button in here. Oh, trip A, trip B odometer. There we go, sorry. And that will take me through all of that. Uh, everything is very easy to operate. And we see down below here, I have what looks like a green bullet with an A in it. I do have high beam assist on this as I have auto headlights and I have fog lights as well. Now if I take this back out of the high beam position, high beam assist goes away, I can turn my fog lights on. What we will notice is when I go to high beam assist, the fog lights automatically go out. For the safety features that come on the car, you do have automatic emergency braking with forward collision warning and pedestrian detection. And basically how that's gonna work is your forward collision warning, you'll probably experience it. Uh, if you're driving along at say 60 kilometers an hour and the person up ahead of you is turning into a parking lot or a side road, they might be doing 10 or 15 kilometers an hour as they're making that turn. Once the car gets close enough that the radar is in range of the vehicle ahead of us, it picks it up and inside the vehicle, it's now gonna beep at you because it recognizes that you're closing that gap really fast. The moment that car rounds the turn, that all shuts off and nothing else happens. If the car in front of you piles on the brakes inside the vehicle, it will beep at you. The gas pedal is going to push back against your foot a little bit, but you're not going to feel it because you're going to, your foot's going to be lifting to go to the brake. The closer you get, the faster and louder the beeping gets. And if need be, the vehicle will start to apply the brakes for you to help avoid or minimize an oncoming collision. Your pedestrian detection is going to work the exact same way, except it's going to work faster because the car in front of you that slammed on the brakes still has some forward momentum while the pedestrian in front of you that just walked out in front of you does not and we're hoping to avoid giving them any forward momentum. The other difference there is instead of starting to apply the brakes it's going to fully apply the brakes just to help avoid or minimize that oncoming collision. You have rear sonar and rear emergency braking as well so as you're backing up and start to get close to something it will beep at you and the closer you get the louder that that beeping is going to get until it hits a point that you're into a steady tone, at which point, if need be, it's going to fully hit the brakes to avoid making contact with whatever is behind you about one foot away from that. So I'm gonna pull forward here a bit. We're gonna have a look at our backup camera here. So my backup camera shows up. I've got green, yellow, and red hash marks here. Now, if I keep whatever is behind me above the red hash marks, I have room to stand in behind the vehicle and get into whatever is in the trunk as this is now a sedan. So I'm gonna to start to back up here. And there's your beeping there. And there's the braking as it kicks in, as I was getting extremely close to whatever is behind me, in this case, another vehicle. And obviously we don't wanna have any contact with that. So that does give you an idea of how that works there. One last thing to go over here, because we have a push button ignition, it is a key fob, not a key. So with this, we have our panic button. I have a trunk release, unlock and lock. Now, because it's a key fob, there is a battery inside of this. It's typically good for two to four years. When you go to start it, if the battery is starting to get low, it's gonna give you a hard time starting and you should get a message of some sort pop up here. If you hit the point that your battery is just dead, on the back, there's a little switch. If you push it over and then lift up, a key will come out. That key is for your driver's side door. Once you get in, you're gonna take the key fob with the Nissan emblem and use that to push down your start button. The vehicle will still start even though the fob is dead. From there, it's time to switch your battery. If you take something flat, like a small flathead screwdriver and put it in one of those two recessed areas, 
and give it a twist, it will pop open and allow you access to the inside. You'll find the battery inside looks a lot like a watch battery, just a bit bigger. And the number on the battery is the battery size. You can buy those batteries at any big box store or drug store. They're about six or seven dollars to buy and they'll last for two to four years. Uh, as much as I love shopping at the dollar store, please don't buy a dollar store battery. They typically only last about three months in the key fobs. Or if you want, you can come in the dealership and we'll do it all for you down at the parts department. They'll charge you about an extra dollar to do it, but they'll test the battery and they'll make sure that everything is what it is and they'll take care of it all for you. Congratulations again on your 2021 Versa. This is the S model. It's a great little car. It's fun to drive. It's really, really good on gas and handles very well and it's quite peppy for the size of it. I know that you're going to love it. It's why you bought it. If you still have any questions, please don't hesitate to get in touch with me. You can call, text, email, or you can stop into O'Regan's Nissan on Baker Drive in Dartmouth, Nova Scotia, and I'll answer any questions that I can for you. I look forward to working with you when it's time for the next one in a few years' time, and if you're ever in service, please stop by and say hello.